everyone and a happy Victober to you. I hope that you are having a lovely reading month so far and that you have maybe found a new favorite play or novel or poet and um, yeah, you're just having some wonderful reading happening. Uh, the video I'm doing today is on Victorian novels for Jane Austen fans. So it is a common misconception that Jane Austen was in the Victorian era. She was in, um, her writing was coming out in the very early 1800s. Um, the 18 teens was when uh, most of it came out. And so I think people hear 1800 and they just assume it's Victorian, but Queen Victoria wasn't on the throne until 1837. So she actually is not Victorian. And I do think if you look at, if you think about the miniseries adaptations of her novels, um, most of them you can tell like it's very, uh, uh, the dresses are very like slim and um, don't have all of these added layers to them. And Victorian dresses, it's like the bigger, the better with the petticoats and everything. So I thought maybe for people who like Jane Austen and aren't sure what Victorian literature they would like, I know people automatically kind of think of uh, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. And for some Jane Austen fans, they're just not that into it. So I have compiled a list of eight books here to tell you about. And hopefully you could find some new Victorian books that you would enjoy. And the first is Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. Anthony Trollope just writes really excellent domestic novels about characters who have problems that seem they, like they would actually happen to people. Um, someone co-signing on a loan and then getting stuck with the debt. Uh, someone losing a check and then being, or spent using a check and not knowing where it came from and then being accused of stealing it. Um, and someone uh, feeling like there is corruption in the church. These are all things that feel like they could happen to real people. And I think that uh, his characters feel very flesh and blood, very interesting, and as do Jane Austen's characters. They're very three-dimensional. And Dr. Thorne in particular, I think has a really good rhythm to it. And um, has some nice romance in there as well. I think Anthony Trollope actually probably has about the same amount of romance in his, but Jane Austen I think is known for it so much. I think basically because she's a woman, but I think there's some really great romance in Anthony Trollope and his novels just seem a really great kind of ratio of romance, humor, suspense, all of that. And they're also just um, incredibly gripping. So I definitely think you should try out Dr. Thorne if you do like Jane Austen. Next is The Widow Barnaby by Frances Trollope, Anthony Trollope's mother. So she definitely had more motivation in her writing. Uh, she was basically trying to keep her family out of the poorhouse. And it's really astounding kind of what uh, an amazing writer she became just out of necessity. I read um, The Widow Barnaby earlier this year with Katie from Books and Things, and we were both we both said several times, this feels such like an Austen novel. It is actually set during the Regency era when Jane Austen's novels are set. So there's that and that the heroine might seem more like a Georgian heroine than she does a Victorian heroine or one of the heroines. So The Widow Barnaby is about a widow um, and kind of her desire to really use her social cachet that she has since she's maybe a bit more esteemed now that she's a widow as opposed to simply a spinster and um, traveling about with her niece. Now she is not really the nicest of people. So it's really interesting to read a book with a despicable protagonist. If you are okay with that, if you love to hate Scarlett O'Hara and Gone with the Wind, um, and I'm told Becky Thatcher from Vanity Fair is very similar, then I think you should definitely check out The Widow Barnaby. Like I said, the humor definitely feels very similar. Um, and just, yeah, the like dry biting humor and the flow of the plot, some of the devices that she uses definitely feel like something Jane Austen would very much approve of. Another thing to note about The Widow Barnaby, um, 
Katie from Books and Things noted in particular that the widow kind of reminded her of Lady Susan. So I don't know how many Lady Susan fans are out there, but if you are, that might be something in particular. This book, The Widow Barnaby, might be something in particular that you would want to investigate. The third one on the list I have is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is, um, I mean, I couldn't make a Victorian list without doing some Elizabeth Gaskell, right? So this is about a community mostly of women uh, who are unmarried and they live in this town, which is based on a town that Elizabeth Gaskell spent a lot of her child, a lot of her childhood in called Nutford. And it's this little town. And this is not so much one overarching story as a series of little vignettes. So I know that some people find that off putting, but I think if you go in with that perspective, um, you can really enjoy this. And it just has so many funny moments in it. Um, and just the dynamic between the women, I think it definitely seems akin to some humor that Jane Austen would have used. Next one on the list is another Jane Austen, and that is Wives and Daughters. I do think uh, the way that there are flawed yet sympathetic characters, uh, especially in this one, really feels um, similar to some of Jane Austen's novels, particularly Emma and maybe Sense and Sensibility, especially in the contrast between Molly Gibson in this, who it starts out and her father um, decides that he should remarry now that she's a young lady who's grown up without a mother. And she gains a stepsister named Cynthia. So I think kind of the contrast of Eleanor and Marianne and Sense and Sensibility can be seen a little bit in the contrast between Molly and Cynthia. Um, although there might not be as much of a progression in the characters. But yes, I think definitely in um, the heart that's in the story, definitely I think is something that Jane Austen fans could find a new favorite book. Uh, the next one on the list is Deerbrook by Harriet Martineau. This was a favorite from October 2018 of mine, and I think this could definitely be compared to Sense and Sensibility, and that we have two sisters whose personalities are vastly different. The way um, they see the world, the way they process their feelings is very different. They come into this very small, insular community, and just um, how it's very much about the people in this book and how the people kind of move all of the events forward. It's less the events affecting people as people affecting the events, if that makes sense. So um, the characters are key to this story and there is love and the women kind of trying to navigate uh, being young women in this new village and kind of trying to trying to find lives that will fulfill them. So I definitely think it's a book that Austin lovers could come to love. Next on the list is Diary of a Nobody by George P. Grossmith. Uh, and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and also say the next one on the list, Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. So I find the humor, particularly in um, Northanger Abbey, to just be kind of really, that story is really over the top. And I love it for that. And the humor in Diary of a Nobody and Three Men in a Boat, it's extremely over the top. Diary of a Nobody is just, it's written in diary format and it's our narrator's observations about his day-to-day -day life, his friendships. Um, he's a father, so it talks about his son some, his marriage, how the conditions of his house, how his job is going. And just uh, is written in such a funny, funny way. And then Three Men in a Boat, um, I think, like I said, if you appreciate kind of the larger than life feel that is Northanger Abbey, you could really appreciate this. It's these three guys traveling down the Thames River and um, they aren't always the most competent of sailors. So if you want a, just a really silly, um, just entertaining read, I think it's really fabulous. And lastly, I do want to recommend a Bronte novel. This is the calmest out of the Bronte novels, and that is Agnes Grey. So it is a very sweet but simple love story. And I think maybe the simplicity of it does put some people off, but I think something about it just really charmed me. I was extremely charmed by it. And I think, um, you know, you're following this character, Agnes, around her family has fallen on um, hard times financially. So definitely some sense and sensibility vibes there. And I think you should definitely try it out, see what you think. 
and let me know if you have read any of these, if you're an Austin fan um, and any of them piqued your interest. I really do hope I was able to guide some Austin fans in the right Victorian direction. I will be back for another Victober video soon and I hope you all have a lovely day.